it's uh, time we got started. Now I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, I've been writing a lot of notes for this session and I hope that they're going to be able to help, uh, help you guys. So my name is Brian Nyagol and I'm the, let me start for what, what I am. Let me start by who I am. I, I am an engineer by profession, electrical engineer by profession. And um, I work uh, at Davis and Chatliff as a research and development engineer in control engineering and also in uh, IoT and I, IoT, that is industrial internet of things. I'm also a very avid technology enthusiast. I run Brainverse Technologies as a passion and I lead a team of about 17 young individuals who are very, very passionate as well about technology just as I am. Part of my team is in this meeting and I just want to really um, want to let you know the kind of people that I work with and that is why I was able to come and present some of these topics to you guys today. So I'll just uh, call them out so they can just say hi to you guys because they're actually the people who give me all the passion that I have to be able to to come here and talk to you. And I'll start with Amos. Amos, if you're if you can hear me, please say hi to this great team. Okay, yeah, I can hear, I can hear you. Uh, hi, team. Uh, again, I'm here to run more, uh, to run from our, from our readers, and to learn more about uh, technology as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Austin, Austin is also here with us. He's also from Brainverse. Austin, just say hi to this great team. Mm, yeah, good, uh, good afternoon. So I'm Austin, I'm Austin Gua. I'm a software developer. I work at Brainverse. So Nyagol is my CEO and a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then we have uh, Venetia Yakusha. Hi, everyone. My name is Venetia. Kakusha. Um, I'm here to just see what and learn more about what Brian has in store for us today. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like also to welcome Gabriel, who is a member of Brainverse by, by passion as well. So Gabriel, please say, uh, say hi to this team and sort of like welcome them to this family, I think <laughs> that we know as well. Gabriel. Thank you very much, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> uh, very glad to have to see you all here. And I'm really looking forward to learning from Brian. I always tell Brian that without him, he's the, he's the one who gives us the confidence to face the future. <laughs> Otherwise, the, the world of the things he has mentioned, IoT, eh? as you can hear them, they are not very easy. <laughs> so thank you very much, Brian, for the family that we are creating. Yeah. And I really look forward to this session. I have my notebook that I know you would have uh, recommended that I come with a digital note app, not taking app, <laughs> but I still have my notebook. So <laughs> that I that really look forward to learning from you. And thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you very much. And uh, I just want to recognize the presence of Lucas, uh, one of the trainers for Writers Guild, uh, Writers Guild, uh, Write Your Passion uh, Academy, or sort of like program. And also the other, uh, Douglas Brigetti, who is also a leader with me at Writers Guild. And Dennis is also here, part of our team at Brainverse. Thank you for coming. And uh, I just want to start. And uh, our topic today is about taking advantage of the digital movement to position your personal or business brand. And um, I think everyone is wondering what is really the movement? Where are people going to and why are people moving? Why is there a shift in, you know, why are people changing their needs? Why are people changing their priorities? And um, as you can see, not just because of the pandemic, but a lot has happened in the past few years, especially here in Kenya and in Africa as a whole. And many companies, many people are starting to shift their attention towards becoming more digitally, um, digitally friendly. And um, the advantages of becoming digitally friendly are immense. There are so many that you can't actually exhaust them. But the pandemic that we have, COVID-19, has made a lot of companies, a lot of people make drastic decisions towards changing how they do things, towards changing how they do business. And that is what we want to talk about today. Uh, 
positioning, I mean, identifying what are the changes, that, what are the shifts that have happened in people and in companies, and then how do we as people, or as consumers, or even as personal uh, individuals looking to better ourselves, position ourselves or our businesses to fit these shifting or changing needs. So I will start by going through some definitions. And I think all of you will help me here, is that what is really the digital movement? When I say digital movement, actually, I, I came up with this topic on the fly because um, Patricia asked me to be like to come and speak to you guys in this uh, in this forum, but she didn't give me a topic and she didn't give me a choice either. So I had to, I had to come here. I had to come sit and talk to you guys about some things. So I quickly put up something on top of my head just to come and clarify um, what are uh, people doing, what are companies doing different, uh, why are they shifting, and how can we align ourselves to that kind of shift? So there's a, a paradigm shift, I think, in people and companies with regards to digital uh, technology. And um, the thing is, working from home or working remotely or just being at home, staying at home is the new normal after COVID-19. And you find that most of most of most businesses operate in an office setup where people go to the office, wake up in the morning, take a matter to go to the office, meet, say hi, greet, um, you know, your, your your fellow staff mates, you know, have some time together, discuss what happened in the news yesterday night. And you know, when when it gets to eight, ten or eight, you sit down and start working. That is how most of us are actually built to actually go through our working, you know, our work environment. But the new normal doesn't really allow this. And what happens is that people are now staying more in their homes. Companies are now changing how they uh, they work and how they track work that is being done. So now that is what we're going to talk about today. And I just want to highlight a few things that I've seen, and, uh, and you guys will add on to them, some of the shifts that are changing in, in, in both companies and people. And I'll, when, when, when you talk about, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just share with you uh, a summary. I mean, if you don't get anything out of this, this is what you should get, and I'll I just share my screen. If you get nothing entirely from from the whole of this conversation, this is actually what you should actually what you should get. So let me see if you can see this. All right. Um, if you can see my screen, let me know. Um, I've, I've made a small a small drawing here that on 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 how, on how everything changes on what has changed in the digital uh, perspective. Um, I hope someone can see my screen and um, I'm just going to speak. If you can't see my screen, just let me know. So there are four types of people in, in the ecosystem I want to talk about. There are personal people like you and me, just you, like your personality. Then there are companies who are looking for people like you or who are looking um, for talent. And then there are businesses, which is the business we own as individuals, as entrepreneurs, um then there is consumers the people that we serve the people who we sell our products to as businesses so these four uh, systems are changing and you find that companies are developing new um uh companies are developing new priorities uh, and, and 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 let's take this here sorry this is actually supposed to be here so that's something like that so companies beginning to have new priorities they're beginning to have new ways of doing things new processes new um new system needs or things like that so and at the same time you as an individual you you are starting to have uh, for you to align to those kind of priorities that companies have in order to get people like you into their teams then you have to have continuous personal development um uh, i mean you have to have or to build new personal development goals and on the other side, where we have business and consumers, consumers' needs are actually changing a lot because of so many things we're going to study as we're going to start off. At the same time, businesses need to align or to bring up new values and products and services in order to align to the new needs of consumers. Therefore, a business needs to position their products and, uh, and services to meet or for the new needs that consumers have. Businesses need to position their values, their products and services towards or for the new needs that consumers are continually having. At the same time, us, me and you, need to create or build new personal development goals that position ourselves for the new corporate priorities 
And we'll also see what priorities those are so that you can be able to position yourself for them. All right, now I'm going to unshare my screen now and, and then we can proceed. Now, what are some of the, uh, I'm just gonna put them randomly. Uh, I'm, 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 we are going to study, we are going to study the, the, the changes in, 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 in the needs of companies and, and the movement that is taking place and also the movement taking place in, 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 you know, in your own personal perspective and in the consumer section. So for the movement, I'm going to consider companies and consumers. First of all, there is a very big shift in how people consume information and news that is around them. People are, are, are shifting from more, um, are shifting from traditional ways of receiving information. And this didn't start yesterday. This didn't start by just the pandemic. This started a long time ago, like many years ago. People are now, believing more in on, on, on news shared by blogs or Facebook pages than they would spend their time to watch the same same thing on TV. People are trusting more and people are you know are engaging with the more spontaneous news and information sources than looking at more rudimentary forms of communication that we already have and are have already you know, been here with us for a long time. So it means that um, I'm able to actually go on Twitter and and, and get to know and people are sort of trying to get access to crowdsourcing of news and information and not relying on one specific thing to be able to um to get to get informed in fact some people even say if it's too important it will get to me like if i have to get to know about it i will get to know about it in one way or another and most people actually uh filter news and filter their the information they get in that way they 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 they, they, they believe that they only trust certain sources and they can pick one here, pick another there, go on Twitter, look at something, look at what's happening in the news, go on Facebook, check a few things, check out with friends, um, rather than maybe stay on TV or, or, or even go out to visit those friends. They people are actually just changing. So if you if you are presenting a product that needs to get to these people, then you have to think about it differently. Right? So another thing that is changing is purchase decisions and how people view products and what people expect from products. And people are starting not to compare things, not because of only price, but also because of other qualities that, that come with the package. So people start to realize that at the end of the day, cheap could be expensive after all. And uh, they're starting to note the several other things that they need to consider uh, to be able to make a purchase of a specific product or service. So. People are also trying to put everything into comparison. They're trying to, um, uh, I was reading somebody that was saying that anytime, actually I was in a mentorship program and uh, one of the mentors mental was saying that one of his teachers used to tell him uh, that if you are stuck, then you need to stop and compare. And I think that's a very, very good analogy. If, if, if you get stuck, if a customer gets stuck or if a customer is, um, is, is, is torn, apart, torn between two products, all they will do is just to stop and make a comparison. How does this benefit me? And how does this not benefit me? What, how does this, what if I spend high on this? What advantage will I get? So actually you have to be able to properly put out that information very clearly to the customer for them to be able to differentiate. And when the time, when, when, when the time to compare comes, they are able to effectively compare and choose a product or service. Another thing that I've realized is that there's a lot of change in terms of taste, fashion, and preference. Nowadays, our taste, fashion, and preference is controlled by so many things, not just the pricing, not just where we live, not just how much money we have, not our social status, but a lot of things uh, affect our, uh, uh, you know, um, our taste, fashion, and preference. And in here, I just get to pricing and quality. People have learned, people have learned to merge, or like sort of like to find a very, very subtle balance between pricing and quality. And, 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 and businesses have tried as much as possible to be able to balance those two. And consumers at the same time are also trying to find that same balance. They, they, want, to, they want to know that I'm getting this cheaper product, but I'm not getting lower quality, right? No one wants to say, okay, I'm getting it cheap and so that I can get a bad quality. No one wants to hear that. No one wants to imagine that. That even though I know I have a pen that costs 10 shillings, and another that costs 100 shillings. I don't want to say that I'm buying the 10 shillings one and then I'm getting low quality. I don't want to hear about that. I just want to say I'm getting something that I can afford, but then it's also quality that is acceptable to my standards. So there's a lot of factors to consider and a lot of change. And talking of um, 
talking of, uh, of, 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 of all these pandemic issues, people consistently, I mean, there's a lot of effects in how money flows in the market, obviously. And um, that means that people don't have enough money in their pocket, people don't have enough pocket change to be able to spend anyhow. So someone wants something that will work. At the same time, they want something that will fit within their budget. So I think that businesses need to be able to position themselves towards that end as well. So um, talking about individuals is uh, time. Time is changing. People have more time right now because uh, they have their work, they're, they're now working differently. They are now, they don't have now to stay in traffic. They don't have to like uh, take matatus to work. They don't have to, um, to go out all the time. You know, people are trying as much as possible to remain in one place and that's just another factor. So people tend to have a lot of time. It means if you want to put out a product, you have to make sure which time in the day of someone would you want. And, and the time is a factor because people's schedules have become different. People are used to, I wake up in the morning at, 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 at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or maybe at 5 a.m. I prepare for work, I prepare my kids, I take my kids to school, I go to work, um, I have a break, break at 10 a.m. to check out some a few things, I have a break at lunchtime, and then if it gets to 4, 5 p.m., I also leave for home, I take a tattoo where I drive my car to or plus my home, and I'm back at home in the evening, I sit down, watch news, and do all that. So nowadays people have a totally different uh, you know um day plan and we have to really we have to really um align to those kind of uh the new changes in how everything is changing uh, how everything has become so very very closely related related to time is the location and locality what happens is that people are now mostly found within one vicinity right so when someone wakes up in the morning until the next day 24 hours they are normally found within the same place. Most people working from home, people who are, are doing everything back, uh, uh, you know, from, from the comfort of their homes, people are no longer moving from one point to another in, uh, as they used to move. So therefore you find that people are, um, are, 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 are finding better ways of getting there. Number one, by using digital communication, by using uh, you know, video conferencing, by using uh, systems to communicate with their, with their workmates, by you know using systems to change how their work is you know is happening and that's why businesses are adopting digital technologies to be able to align themselves to this kind of you know changing uh, requirements there's another change another requirement for um, psychosocial need or psychosocial support like if people are in more need of psychosocial support and psychosocial uh, 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 sort of like activities that help them to stay sane because staying at home, if, you, if you've been working for 10 years and you've every day, every single work day, you've been leaving your house, spending all of that time outside, and now you are told you can no longer do that, um, <laughs> and you can no longer do that, it, it, it's really something that places everyone in, you know, on, on a spotlight. And because uh, it's a different thing, you actually have a different uh, perspective of everything. So uh, there's a lot of need for that kind of psychosocial requirement in people and guys need to get that attention. And companies or even us, we need to actually at, uh, attend to it. Now, um, uh, I'll just answer a question. Gabriel is asking if the world is moving too fast. I think the world is just moving in the right place and uh, the world is just forcing us to actually keep up with it. We can keep up and uh, I, can t I can tell you, I can attest to you that if my mother knows what Zoom is now. I know the world is not moving too fast. The world is just putting us in the right place to, you know, to be at par with it. And all we have to do is to try to align. Hence the, uh, hence the, hence the, 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 the topic of today. You know, trying to position yourself in order to take advantage because we are looking at it as an opportunity, not as a barrier to achieving what we want to achieve as people, as businesses, as corporates or even as consumers, the, the leap in technology, the leap in adoption of, of, of digital products, digital uh, systems is not a barrier. It's actually uh, a conduit that can lead us to much better uh, avenues in terms of um, how we consume products in how, terms of how we build and manage our companies and how to be, we do business, and even how we do our daily stuff in the house and, 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 and how we raise our kids and everything like that. So. 
before we, we, we I go to now, we, we now like um, uh, most of that before I, I saw that most of that was about uh, was about you know companies and also some part of it to consumers. So let me just focus on a bit on what on the on the shifts in um, in companies or like corporates. So what's happening? Many companies are adopting remote work policies, and most companies are now drafting policies that will work for them and their employees in order to number one monitor. Uh, so you know, before that, develop a remote working uh, policy and environment that can sustain the company. People, uh, com companies are trying to fix new um, ways of allowing their team members to collaborate with each other. And companies are looking for newer ways of measuring productivity, improving productivity. You know that they normally tell us we are to work from eight to five, right? That's what everyone believes. But are you really productive from, from eight to five? A big percentage of us are not productive the whole time. In fact, they say that if you stay at work late, it means you're actually getting your, your, your production, your, 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 your productivity is deteriorating with time. Therefore, by the time you leave work at 9 p.m. or at 8 p.m., it's most likely that you are not productive at the beginning of the day and you are now just getting productive or you've been productive and you're not, you're not, doing, you're not adding any value to your productivity at that time. So companies, since we are working online and we are no longer told, that you are here until 10 a.m. during the break time, you're not on your desk. Companies are trying to forge new ways of, 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 of monitoring productivity of their staff. And therefore, we all need to be aware of that. And companies are also changing how they view innovation. Normally, companies view innovation as uh, innovation and, um, and, 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 and digital, like, like digital migration or digital, uh, alignment as an as 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 a liability, but now these companies are starting to see it as an investment because they've realized that if they don't keep changing and innovating their processes, if they don't keep innovating their products, if they don't keep innovating their processes and, and ways of doing things, they will actually be left behind. And therefore, innovation is becoming a very very um, uh, important pas uh, aspect of business development and uh, company um, and management of, of, of corporate uh, entities. And therefore, that is also something else that is, is coming. Um, companies also, um, especially in the NGO world, the nonprofit world, they are beginning to align themselves to volunteerism. And if you are an, an individual who wants to get into that field, you might want to consider being able to volunteer in certain aspects. Right now, COVID-19 has given a lot of volunteerism opportunities. You can do a lot of things for the people around you. You can do a lot of things for the community that you live in. You can do a lot of things for the government. You can contribute um, the financial needs to the COVID-19 um, you know, kitty uh, response uh, kitty. You can do a lot of volu volunteer work with, with right now. And therefore, we have to actually adopt that. Um, systems uptake. Companies and corporates are starting to realize that it's time they digitize their processes. It's time they, 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 they made something that actually helps them to control or to be in control of, their, of, of everything, even when their employees are decentralized. And that is why a couple of products, companies like Zoom, which were not, well, of course, popular, but were not very well known, are now widely used. And, uh, you know, almost everyone knows what Zoom is, just like how someone knows what um, an air conditioner is in Dar es Salaam or in Mombasa, right? Right now, everyone knows about Zoom. And that is why various solutions have actually springed up. And, 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 and I'm happy to say that BrainVas, as part of our COVID-19 uh, response, we were able to come up with an, a new idea that enables businesses to, you know, sort of like transition effectively from an office setup into a digital um, and uh, remote work from home team setup that can allow them to allow the team to work together on projects, uh, work on customer information, and even work on the staff details all in one place. And many other solutions are going to come up and already some of them are already in the market, right? And um, so we believe that this kind of change, this kind of shift, is up to us to now take advantage of now. Uh, just in the next five minutes, I just want to hear from anyone listening in, some of the things you think have changed that I haven't mentioned in, 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 in what, I've, uh, what I've been mentioning. What are some of the things that you think have changed, either digitally or things that um, will in, 
or will make people use digital media to sort of uh, uh, to access this kind of changes. So if you have anything that you think has changed that I haven't mentioned, please, you can just unmute your microphone and speak it up so that our guests can get to hear about it. Anyone? Uh, Brian, Fabian yes. is saying, hello, Brian. As yes. the world moves too fast, I almost can't keep up. When you learn to use something in bracket technology, sooner or later, it has changed. Things are booming so fast. How can I keep up? Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was actually um, not touching that part of, of Gabriel's comment, but I'll, I just want to I'll, I'll answer that. I think there's something, an idea that I have that probably, and maybe someone else would pick it up, but uh, I, would, I have an idea about how to sort of like what I think about what Gabriel is asking about. So um, does anyone else have anything else, anything that you think has changed with uh, either the pandemic bringing it or just uh, the need for businesses to people to shift towards the digital platforms and media? All right. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Wendy. Wendy is saying that there's work balance at home with family and kids. Concentration has slowed down. That has certainly changed, and that is actually that is one of the effects of uh, of now the availability at home all the time. Thank you for that, uh, Wendy. Thank you for that. Anyone else? We have five minutes for, for this, but I just want you guys, if you have something that you want to mention kindly just put it down on the chat or just unmute your microphone and, uh, and talk about it. Because I think there's a lot that we need to learn from, from what's happening. And um, we actually need to be able to see how we can get into it and take advantage of it. Um, all right. Uh, as, sorry, someone is speaking. Brian, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, at when you when you ask us to share, I just realized that uh, you are going to expose some of us. I, I think <laughs> I think one of the things that has happened because of COVID is that uh, those of us who didn't like technology have no option but now to like technology. You know, uh, and we have to learn very fast. Yeah? But uh, I think here we are very lucky to have you because then you are able to guide us and to cause us to. To, to do things in an easier way. Uh, I'm a publisher and, uh, you know, a traditional publisher for that matter. And so what we have always done is that we work from the office and uh, everything is done from the office. But right now we are learning to work remotely. You know, we have to uh, depend more on technology. We have to send uh, files. Now we know how to send big files, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I think really, Technology is something that we can no longer run away from, and um, I think we are just we are blessed to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lucas, for that. Thank you very much. And and, and and as Lucas has said, a lot has changed, and especially in his field, <laughs> it, it's really um, a big drift and a big shift because uh, it, it is one that has really been affected. But I think uh, just slightly positioning yourselves, uh, like as a company or as a corporation, to to, to the changing needs really makes you feel like I, like I can see you really adopted, uh, Lucas. I'm happy that you are able to come here. I know I know people of your age who have no idea what Google Meet is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some people as young as me as well don't even know what all these things are. And uh, I can see Douglas is also saying, is asking that is technology causing more anxiety, depression, and mental illness? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, it's not causing me any kind of anxiety. It's just making me think faster, probably. And uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 let me just um, maybe address Gabriel's question, and then I can also address Douglas's question. And then we can go to the next stage of now, how you know, learning how we can now probably take advantage of, of these shifts and not see them as barriers or see them as, um, uh, so, so that we can see them as stepping stones to the next milestone of our lives. So. Gabriel, technology is technology. I mean, it's because people are continuously doing research. New products are coming in and technology is not like, um, like knowing how to send an email today is not like knowing how to ride a bike. I was taught how to ride a bike with the bike brand called Eastman, like way, way a long time ago in, um, 
in the 2000s, right? And um, up to, to up to date, I can ride any bike, like any bike, mountain bike, whichever kind of bike, I can ride it, right? But the bikes have been changing. If you can see, the bikes have been changing all the way from Eastman, which is a very, very huge bike by then, and it had so many things on it. Now bikes are as small and as refined as, you know, you can actually ride on a mountain using a mountain bike. So bikes have changed. And why do they change? Because if they don't change, imagine if up to now we would be having bikes for transport. It would be so messy. That means we wouldn't need probably the tarmacs. So if, if technology is at standstill, a lot of things become uh, unachievable. So technology has to move. Technology, people have to find new ways of doing things. If I used to build, uh, if a company used to, um, uh, used to have a computer that is the size of uh, uh, the size of, of probably my, my laptop here. Another company would want to make the computer more light, but, you know, more mobile. That's why we have desktops, then we have laptops, then we have phones, then we have, uh, you know, Bluetooth speakers, you know, a, a lot of things are actually getting miniaturized. And technology is making sure that everything we can carry, I mean, everything we need to use in our daily day -day lives is something we can carry in our pockets. That's why you can nowadays carry your phone with you. It's no longer tied up to a desk. You can carry it with you. You can send emails on the phone. You, can, um, you don't have to go to a cyber to be able to send your emails. So technology is going to always change. In fact, from like a rule of thumb, technology changes every so often. And uh, software technologies, you can give it like a year to change on how things happen. For example, if you looked at, uh, at Gmail, uh, last year, there is a lot of changes on Gmail today. If you looked at Facebook last year, there is so much change that you can't even imagine. Someone who was on Facebook last last year, when he comes in today, he'll be a bit confused. He'll be seeing everything. He'll be seeing a new logo. He'll be seeing uh, a, a different curvature, a new um, range of colors. He'll be seeing new features. And I'll be seeing now Facebook has something called, uh, I think, rooms or something. So a lot of things will be, will, will be seen. So Software, normally uh, within a year, it's completely changed. Hardware, give it three years, and you find that um, uh, Samsung has released a new, a completely new brand of phone. Uh, Apple have actually come up with another thing. We have now more efficient LED bulbs that can actually take much less energy in our homes. We have a mouse that is now in a different format. We have headphones and our Bluetooth, and you have wireless charging. You have a lot of things. So it's going to be changing and we just simply have to keep up and we, we we only keep up if we see it as a stepping stone and then we open up our minds to be able to learn how to use there's a site called how stuff works and i knew about this site when i was just finishing high school how stuff works and i used it a lot that's where i learned first how um you know how the internet or like what about or how the internet works how uh things like uh um uh, how do you call it? I was so interested in, in, in remote control, right? In remote control of toys and stuff. I, I was actually, that's where I learned how remote control toys work. And it's there because we have to have be open-minded and actually want to learn some of these things. Right now, COVID-19 made us learn it by force. And it looks like us here, over here. Uh, you know, now I get to understand the thing we normally put in our CVs I work well under pressure. I think that's really something that has now, you know, we're really experiencing it. Now, this is the pressure. Can we work under it? Can we work under extreme pressure? And the extreme pressure is your boss has organized a, a meeting with a partner in the US and you have to be there and you have to learn how to be in that call. You have to learn how to be, to position yourself in the middle of the screen and, and, and be there and present yourself uh, and have a conversation on Zoom. So you really have to learn fast and be there. You know, show up for that, and that is what is trying to what we're actually facing, and we have to actually be there for it. So, one way of keeping up, Gabriel, is probably um, trying. I know you're 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 the kind of person who uh, subscribes, or so sort of like we have you and, and and a lot of us in Writers Guild have this mantra of you know giving it a try, try it, you know, uh, trial and error, keep trying, and when you try something for the first time and it doesn't work out. Try it again. Try it somehow. Try it in a different way. Try it on a different device. 
And I can tell you, technology is so smart and it's so nice that if it doesn't work on this phone, try it on another phone, on another computer, or on another browser, or on another network. It's just that simple. Like, it will work at the end of the day. So you just need to try it well enough. And the other thing is, it is so binary. Like, it has to be done in a certain way for it to work. So if you don't have the knowledge to support how it has to work, then just try. Try it out. If you, if you see that your outreach is not working to send an email, try and use webmail. Try and go to uh, use maybe your phone or, your, or the Gmail application. Try various things. And you will find someone, I mean, one that works and one that you can call your best friend. You'll always find one that you can call your best friend. And therefore, you'll have a best friend in communication, in email communication. You will have a best friend in social media. You'll have a best friend in, in, in video conferencing. You'll have a best friend in 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 in, in ebook reading you have a best friend in in, in a best uh, isp for, for providing your internet in your house you know who is fast who is slow and you also know how to do speed tests to identify who is better than the other you know a lot of things so you just have to open up your hair your, your mind and uh, be free and be free to trial and error and the thing the, the reason why i think douglas is right by say by by, by saying that technology could be causing anxiety is because Technology has led to a lot of data coming in and going out and passing all through our eyes. There's a lot of um, traffic of information flowing up and about. And therefore, if you are not careful as a person, you might be overwhelmed by the amount of information coming out. And um, I, I, there's a day that I told Gabriel that if your phone rings a number of times, there's, there's actually a research on that, and there's, there are very, very hard figures on how much a phone, just a phone, if it has internet, can distract you from doing your work. There's a lot of statistic around how um, uh, uh, the notifications, if, uh, if, if a phone uh, distracts you just once, you will, you're sure you will be losing up to 20 to 30 minutes of your productivity. Just one distraction. Let me tell you how. When, when you hear a message on your phone, and then you check the phone. You'll find that task is sent you a message telling you that this weekend, please come buy this and that. At the same time, if you ever want to um, to to Nivas, Nivas already has another message for you there. So you will read it and then check out what's happening. Then before you know it, another one has come in. What's up, up? Before you know it, Gabriel likes your photo on on Facebook. Before you know it, Douglas tagged you on a photo. Before you know it, everything. So one instance of distraction causes your whole hour. To go back and since we depend on social media we depend on, on on the internet we depend on on blogs and we depend on news on youtube and all these things for information everything is coming from anywhere and yes it can cause depression because you sometimes feel like there is so much that you have to take in that you should you feel like you don't you can't take in but then you also feel left out because if you don't take it in you will appear again you know not informed and things like that so yes it can cause a, a depression depending on how you take it. But I think that we all have to protect ourselves from that kind of shift. And we have to make sure that we are able to choose our sources of information. You go through all the, like I said, you have best friends in everything. So that you know, if I want news, I will go on Twitter, I will go on Facebook, I will go on Instagram, I will go on YouTube, and just watch for a while. Go to NTV, maybe the... Their, their YouTube YouTube page and look at the videos for the whole day, right? So that you can get informed. You have to know which is your best friend in email communication. You have to know which is your best friend in getting social information. You have to know which, which is your best friend in meeting up with your friends uh, or like working uh, in your workspace. So you really have to develop those kind of relationships with these platforms, with these devices, with these uh, internet service providers, with these networks. You have to know which one works for you. That way, you are able to, you are able to dis, like, like sort of like hide, um, cover or leave out all the distractions that can come into, uh, in, in, into, in, into your, 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 your plate. And of course, someone else, if you have another response to that question, you can please just type it in so that Douglas can get more insight on that. So let's now jump into positioning and how do we now position? Uh, how do we now, how do we now position our our, both our brand and our businesses towards this kind of shift that we are, everyone is having because either due to COVID-19, due to the need to become more efficient, 
due to the need to become more innovative, due to the need to become more uh, spontaneous or um, you know, uh, product friendly, you know, more friendly to the, to the consumers, for instance. Now let's start with um, with companies or like brands. If you own a company or if you run a company or if you're a manager of some company, how do you need to position that company to the ever-changing needs and the ever-changing uh, requirements of consumers and also to align to the changes they've now had in, in their lives in terms of the, how much they, how they spend their time, where they are at, and uh, you know what kind of things they uh, they read and how they literally like do everything in their life. So one thing you might have to uh, and, and 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 one of my colleagues at Brainverse uh, recommended uh, uh, a very good marketing writer um, called uh, Seth Godin, and I I I was watching a very short clip of Seth Godin talking about the difference between marketing and advertising, and. And there was a very subtle difference that marketing, I mean, advertising is just, you know, putting something in people's eyes. But marketing is actually telling someone why they need what they need from you. Sometimes they don't even know what they need. And therefore, marketing has a very, very uh, user-centric uh, or customer-centric perspective that makes it more effective than just simple advertising. Of course, advertising can have a very good marketing perspective. And what Seth was saying is that a lot of failure that's been attributed to some of the things that we do is because they lack the marketing perspective. They lack the marketing. They are too advertised. They are too hardcore in advertising that they lack a lot of that marketing um, uh, 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 marketing perspective or the user-centeredness perspective that they need to come out with so that someone has to take them up. And um, if you need, like if, you, if you're selling or if you're making up a drug that maybe is, is uh, like, um, uh, a cure for something like cancer or uh, corona, or you're actually persuading people to stay at home. It's about marketing, not advertising. You don't actually, it, it's persuasive. You actually ask people to do something because of one, two, three. So you give them an option. You see, advertising sort of like pushes everything onto your eyes and you have nothing to do about it. But probably marketing is meant to be more, I mean, um, more persuasive, more customer centric. So in your packaging, you have to make sure that as a business, you actually market and don't do too much of advertising. I mean, if you look at them from the face value, they're one and the same thing. But what kind of impact are you trying to create by asking people to use your product or to use a service? Then how you do it, when you do it, and who you do it to actually determines whether you're marketing or you are advertising. Uh, another thing is um, one aspect that uh, that marketing also brings about is compare. I mean, um, um, you know, uh, doing something like you know, getting into you know, uh, adopting compassion, other than I mean, uh, ra uh, rather than coercion. I think advertising is a lot of co does a lot of coercion. Like it, it tells you, okay, brand, you have to buy Colgate because Colgate does this. This is this is what it does, but then you have to be able to allow someone to have the freedom to to choose just tell them what how good they will feel when they use that product when they use that service then they decide for themselves what uh direction they have to take so the way you handle the way you position your products it has to be in a way that brings in uh, a, a comparison and one of the aspect is compassion when you bring in compassion into your marketing and into how you position your product and you feel for the person who is going to use your product next, then it means that you have to, uh, to, 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 to express guys are, are mentally in, even if they don't know. So how can you be the person that actually encourages them or be, uh, becomes that person that makes sure that the, 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 where someone feels more welcome, someone feels more at home when they use your service, they use your product, or they just hear about your brand. They feel some light in them when they hear about Writer's Guild. They feel some light in them when they hear about Brainverse. What do they feel when they actually um, hear about your brand? And this is something that we have to sit down and think, how do we want someone to feel when they hear about us? Do they, do they feel overwhelmed? Do they feel 
loved, do they feel taken care of, do they feel like they are the best, do they feel what, how do they feel, that compassion of being in their shoes, trying to, um, to, 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 to empathize with the user, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the consumer. One other thing is to, companies have to embrace collaboration and uh, not competition. I think uh, Anne Gatine spoke about collaboration uh, as compared versus competition in, in, uh, in the in the right to passion class graduation last a uh, few weeks ago. And I think it was very clear that we have to adopt, uh, and what she said is that we have to avoid, you know, the dirty, mucky, muddy, uh, <laughs> uh, sort of like environs of competition and adopt the blue oceans of uh, collaboration. I think it's really important. And therefore we need to start working together with other people doing the same thing or doing uh, something close to what we are doing in order to become, uh, to, to create a bigger impact. And the ways of doing this is actually bringing teams together. And how do we bring the teams together? By actually bringing them digitally and using all these systems that are now actually with us and communication tools to make sure that our people are working uh, you know, together. And like Writers Guild and Brainverse have been working together for a long time now, for years. And what it has, what it has brought is only goodness. It has only brought goodness that these two organizations actually, you know, feeding into each other. And that is something that I, I would, you know, any day encourage anyone to be able to find an organization that your vision aligns with, that you can support them and they can support you in one way or another and you can, you know, get there uh, faster and easier. And pricing is another thing that uh, businesses need to consider because look at it this way. Before someone used to just have a very very short time, people were so busy. People had all didn't have all this time. They're in traffic. They're tired. They come from work. They come back home. They have very little time to make a decision. Right now, someone has all the time to do their research, and they know about Jumia. They know about Upwork. They know about um, uh, to, they know about um, they know about Fiverr. They know about all these digital platforms that someone can get something done at. And therefore, we have to make sure that if we are doing our pricing, we have to do our pricing right to be able to target and make sure that this person will say yes, even without actually saying something more. Of course, they might, you know, ask, you know, everything has to be again, of course. But how we perceive the product, how we perceive the, the, the service depends on if the pricing is, is relatable. We have to understand the capability of our customers to actually outdo us in research. They will go research, they will go asking for prizes, and now they will simply need to write an email or go to the website and do a chart and then they get a pricing. They compare it with yours, within no they say, no, we can't take your pricing, it's too high. So we have to be very, very clever in doing um, very competitive pricing, and that means we have to do a lot, a lot of sorry, uh, competitive analysis to try and see what's happening on the other side and, uh, and, and, and see really what's happening. We have to also to be able to, as businesses, to offer value-added services. If you are doing business, you have to offer value-added value services. Uh, something that if you're offering uh, to, to publish a book for someone, can you offer maybe to ensure that they get their first 10,000 sales? Or can you say that we'll also guide you until you get your, uh, you, you publish your next three books? This is what we'll give you. We'll ensure that always your books are this, uh, in, in, you know, having this advantage. Or are you offering that if you're doing some on a website, are you saying that we will make sure that your website gets to this kind of users before we actually let you now uh, you know, swim on your own? So value-added services, and you might also call them after-sales services, but I'm calling them value-added services because they're not necessarily, uh, they're things that will, can cost you money, but they will also ensure that you have your client for a longer period of time. Value-added services are things that will just keep someone coming to buy which they can actually say, if so-and-so has this value added service, I mean, this after-sale service, and this one has this after-sale service, I can simply go to the other one that offers more. But if you offer value added services, they will always count them on you. And this value added service may only be unique to you. So you have to craft your ways of looking at ways of, of, of offering value added services to be able to uh, adopt to the, to the needs of the digitally savvy users that are now coming to to interact with. Now let's go to the more interesting part of uh, personal positioning. And I think I, I would like a lot of uh, also contribution, uh, or if any, uh, from you guys. And before I go to personal positioning, uh, does anyone have any other way in which 
uh, a company or a business can align itself to the changing needs of, 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 of consumers, consumers who are becoming more um, more aligned to getting information from the internet, more aligned to using uh, digital communication platforms, and those that are already normally in their houses, those consumers who are always struggling to get a fully fledged internet service within their home, not now depend on on bundles that like we used to. I wonder when I come from, uh, probably when I, if I have to go to work and I come from work and I come back to the house, I have internet, I have Wi-Fi. So does any one of you have any other ideas on how a business or a, an entrepreneur can be able to position their company to be able to align to these changing digital requirements of users? Again, if you have anything to say, just unmute and go for it. All right. Anyone else? Anyone with the with, with something on that? And uh, there are a couple of people already in the in the, in the team. Uh, if you have anything that you you'd like to you'd like to see some some something that someone can be able to do, you can just actually mute your mic and uh, say it if you are thinking of something, or you can type on the chat. I'll reach out. All right, um, I'm, I'm not sure if someone has something to say, but let's now finalize with uh, this last part of, I think this which, which touches most of us. I, I just want to hear, um, how many of you here own a business? How many of you here own a business? Like, um, and uh, just if you own a business, just uh, unmute your microphone and say I. If you own a business or if you're running a business or if you're a manager somewhere. I. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Anyone else owns a business, is a manager, or is um, an entrepreneur or doing something like that? Anyone? Aye. Right. Oh, thank you, Omondi. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good. Now, I think the next the next part is where we will enjoy the most. Oh, PBM Mudama, thank you very much as well. Thank you very much. That's now um four i guess three four anyone else who is leading or is, who is leading uh something or is an, an entrepreneur or is a manager in some organization gabriel you're a manager where are you or gabriel left <laughs> i'm here eh? and i told you i have a lot to learn eh? <laughs> when it comes to technology so I, my notebook is going strong eh? now i think it's on the third page <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you yeah but um i'm really i really appreciate the lessons <laughs> yes mm. so you, you're one of the managers so I, and i think the previous discussion has been beneficial to you i hope and also uh, phibia and lucas and omondi i hope it's been um indeed it's been very fruitful although it's a, a, a like four out of 15. So now let's go to the other part, and I hope we are all able to contribute. Before I start saying my my thoughts, now, how should how do you think? Now, and like we said, as as as, as people, uh, I also mentioned what corporates the change that corporates or companies are having. They are starting to adopt remote work. They're starting to adopt new ways of uh, of, 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 of of tracking productivity. They're starting to um to 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 um to embrace innovation. They're starting to also embrace volunteerism and to really look out for it. They're also trying to starting to make sure that we use systems to maintain processes and to sort of harmonize um, business processes that they have, have in their companies. Now, how how do you think? And now that every other person that is here is having their own personal development goals, how do you think you can position yourself in order to address these changing technological or digital requirements? By corporates or companies, I'll I'll just I will say I will ask if anyone has any idea what you need to do as a person to adapt to these changing uh, needs or requirements of companies. Anyone, if you are if, if you are employed anywhere, if you are. If you're working as part of a team, if you are, if I mean, if, if you actually have work that you're doing, then you should be able to know what you need to do. I mean, apart from what I'm going to say, I just want from, from the top of your head, what do you think 
you need to do to adapt. You know, we might be talking here, but guys are, are, are not there. <laughs> so I just want to, 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 to believe that guys are here. So I'll, 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 just, I'll just do this. I want everyone to say hi from the top. Amos, can you say hi? <laughs> hi, Brian. Ah, good. Austin, can you say hi? hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, Eunice, uh, hi. I heard you say hi, but you can say hi again. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Hi, nice to see you around. Fanon. Fanon, you can say hi. Omondi, please say hi. Guys want to hear that, to know that you are here. Omondi, are you there? Yes, okay. hi. Hi, Brian. Yes, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, thank you very much. June. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brian. Sorry for coming in late. Yeah, I mean, you're not too late because we are just going to the next point where we are told that uh, we're going to learn more about how you and me can be able to be better, better prepared to uh, to align to the needs of the ever-changing digital needs of companies and corporates. So, um, Solomon. Hi, Brian. Hi, thank you for coming in. Vera, are you there? <laughs> Please say hi to everyone here. Hi, people. Hi. Hello, uh, Venetia, are you, are you still there? Hi, I'm here. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, let me see who else I haven't called out. Um, Writers Guild Kenya, who is this? This is Patricia, right? <laughs> Patricia, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're all here. So now let's, let's, let's try, let's try one more time. Is there anything you need to do as a person in order to position yourself differently in um in, in this and i can see amos has said something and uh i'm also going to read uh something that uh um or oh, uh so i think i can add something uh, yes please amos you can say it yeah yeah i think uh as i'm uh, as a manager uh, as a business owner it is the right time that uh, we accept the fact that uh, things are no longer the same uh, things are changing. It is either we change or we are out of the business. Uh, positioning uh, online, I think it is a key thing, and uh, positioning yourself as a manager, understanding. Because you see, um, uh, before this uh, pandemic, we used to manage our work uh, very easily. Uh, maybe you are, if you are working on an uh, office, that is in an in office, uh, but now you have to manage somebody who is working online, and you need uh, that performance. So the best thing it is to run and accept that uh, you have to run this because you need to keep your managerial role in that company. If you cannot manage people, people who are working online, you will see uh, some people uh, picking up, uh, of which it is not a good thing, uh, picking up your, your job, and who, who can uh, know how to manage this online uh, uh, client and uh, your staff. So I think the first thing it, here it is uh, to accept that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. There is no other option but learning. Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, I also want to read out something that uh, that uh, that Omondi said. He said, "Totally agree. I freeze all apps and check only when I need." That is very important as well. It keeps you uh, in check. Um, so he also says that uh, technology is trendy, short-lived, and hence. It causes disruptions. I mean, uh, it, it, technology disrupts itself every now and then, and um, it favors the now generation, like what what Ramon is saying, and the rest who are not ready to move on obviously struggle to move or to go, go to the next step. Thank you for that. Um, uh, for that, and before I now chip in, I'll read uh, a question from Fanon. It says, my question delves into the regulation of social media and the internet. As the internet and social media become prevalent, they have turned along regulations. Just recently, U.S. President Donald Trump had a, a scuffle with Twitter. He actually threatened to shut down social media companies that undermine the voices of conservatives. Kenya in her finance bill 2020 proposes digital tax on online purchases. In this regard, what is the future like for social media and the internet? Um, my thinking, Fanon, is that it's really, um, it's really bright, I think. Just like other things, 
other like rules that govern companies, rules that govern business, rules that govern export and import. All these things existed way before and rules and regulations were built to support their existence. Right now, the reason why you think maybe a lot is happening is because these are happening when you're alive. But some of these things were built way before. Uh, it's very possible that some of the other things, like when people, when companies started to trade together, when people went beyond the community borders and they went beyond uh, country uh, district borders or regional borders and started doing business with each other, a lot of things had to come. National uh, International Chamber of Commerce has to had to come up with with the rules that govern export and import and how people buy something from China and bring it over to Kenya. So all these rules were already built when we, when we, when we came into life. And therefore, we didn't actually experience that, um, that, uh, 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 that kind of disruption when they were happening. I think the same thing is happening to, to the digital media. And, and, and the, the digital evolution is just another phase in, um, in, in the industrial, uh, you know, in, in development, I mean. Uh, we have the industrial, you have the internet and the dot com and everything else that happened before. The, uh, and, and it's just another step you're taking. So not so many countries in the world right now have policies that govern the utility, the usage and the management of digital platforms, digital systems, social media and the internet as a whole. Not many countries have these policies already set up. In fact, many countries have very weak laws, if any, that govern how their citizens or uh, people in the companies, people uh, in, uh, in the country that have companies are able to utilize the digital platforms, the digital information that they collect from people on, uh, on a regular basis. So we really have to, um, to understand that the reason why all this is coming up right now is that many companies, many countries are struggling to quickly put up policies that will work for them. And of course, mistakes are happening. I mean, um, the government of Kenya, like in the finance bill, it, it, it's, it's just one, uh, there's a lot to say about it, which I won't say right now, but they are all reactions to, hey, oh, this thing is happening and we have nothing to protect ourselves. So guys actually rushing towards putting in policies that uh, affect, uh, that control and, 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 and um, uh, govern these kind of opportunities. And I do know that with time, with time, Sometimes people make um, bills just to get as a quick fix or things happen just for as a quick fix. But with time, some of these things they come to understand and uh, countries and, um, and governments will come to understand some of the constraints that exist in this kind of businesses. Then they can be able to obviously amend some of these things. So I do think that it's, all these are not a barrier, but they are control measures so that the digital um, platforms are not misused by corporates or by anyone else, so that I cannot be able to openly harass you on social media and get away with it, so that I cannot be able to influence or uh, maybe um, to, uh, to, 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 to start uh, a coup d'etat, I mean, I mean, I mean a, a coup on social media, on Twitter, and, 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 and it just slides. So all these are just measures to make sure that we are, you know, at the end of the day, consumers are getting protected. And of course, government also wants to you know, get something out of it. Of course, that's the other part because they have to take control of the business taking place in, in, uh, around, uh, around the digital economy. So I think it's just time the, the rules have been made. They're being made, others are being made. And if in any case we get a chance to, to contribute on that, we need to make sure that our voices are heard. And uh, if at all, they'll give us that chance. Um, so I, I think that it's just for good we are heading towards a very bright future, only that we have to take personal responsibility to protect ourselves at some point, just like we are doing with COVID-19. We have to take it as a personal responsibility to protect ourselves from the side effects, to protect our children, to protect our homes, to protect our jobs from all, I mean, not jobs, not really much, but of course, yes, I mean, you have to protect, protect your job, like you have to transition. And we will be, we, we, in the next few minutes, we'll also look at, um, um, that part and i'll just go to it now i think um amos mentioned something very very important and i can summarize it as domain knowledge remember for you to perfectly lead a team that is working remotely or the team that is digitally savvy you don't have to have the same exact knowledge as them you simply have to have something i call domain knowledge information you know when something is happening it really helps you to keep everything under control. 
And for example, Gabriel is leading a team of writers' game. Uh, Lucas is leading a team of uh, 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 guys, uh, this company employees, publishers, and, and stuff like that. So if, if 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 Lucas didn't know anything about publishing, of course Lucas doesn't do everything in, in in the company. There are things that are done by other people, but he needs to know enough. He needs to he needs to have enough experience in that publishing in that publishing industry for him to know when something is going wrong, for him to know what is important and what is not. For him to know when things are going down or things are happening not the right way, for him to know when someone is productive and not productive, all these things <clears throat> come from having some domain knowledge. And similar to this, you have to have the domain knowledge of the digital media as a whole. You have to know how what happens on social media, not really the activities, but how they impact lives of people. You have to know how to do some things like sending emails. These are things that you need to have on, like you need to have you know, on your fingertips as a person living in this century. And you have to actually be part of the part of the of the movement. You have to be able to understand, to read blogs, to read up the some of the trends that are happening. You have to know what is the new technology in writing, what is the new technology in in in, in social media. Is there a, a new TikTok that has come up? Is there a new um, platform or a new video conference conferencing platform like we are coming up with Chamber at Brainverse? Is there, you have to actually understand what are the dynamics that are happening in the technology world for you to be able to fully adapt. So domain knowledge is very, very important. You have to adapt, you have to um, prepare yourself to not be a dodo when people are talking about things that you know. It just helps you to get yourself um, abreast with things that are happening in the technological world. And I'll, I'll also say something again, building a track record in remote work is something that is very, very important visible track record and evidential track record on being able to work remotely and working remotely just means you are working under your own position like you're working in your own terms you decide when you're working you decide when you're in full attire you decide when you are working from the bedroom or from the from from, 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 from the living room you decide a lot of things on your own when you're working remotely and therefore if companies are shifting towards starting to uh to to, to have say that we are working two days remotely from home and three days from work, or working one week from home, one week from work, or two weeks from home, two weeks from work. How then will you be able to uh, um, um, to, to to have? Because remote work is about trust, and when people trust you, they believe that when you're at home and you're working from home, you will still spend work. You will still spend work hours doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, and that, that's trust. So how can people? How can you make sure someone trusts you with remote work? you have to build a track record of being able to be managed remotely or being able to do things without you having to be managed you know, in, in a physical um, office. So you have to make sure that you build a clean track record, whether it's working in teams with a few friends of yours or leading a group of people who normally have meetings and actually execute things. You have to actually build a track record of being able to work remotely and get things going, even in that situation. You also need to be able to um, build... Um, uh, a track record in in, in, in in productivity and you have to measure, you have to know how to measure and to prove your productivity. You have to be able to know how to alienate everything that is not contributing to your productivity and actually put the things that are most important first. You have to understand how to make sure to be productive enough in order for you to achieve your goals. Um, case in point, um, when you wake up in the morning, you find sometimes you find yourself if you look at the tasks you do from morning to afternoon, that time you should spend doing only the tasks that you planned to do from the other day, unless it's a very important thing that must, I mean, deserves your attention. If you, you can you should only spend most of your most productive hours on things that you actually planned to do on your own before even considering what someone else needs to be done for. Because that other person also planned their own stuff to do. One of them, which is what they're giving you to do. So if they wanted you to do it, they would have informed you way earlier so that you plan for it and do it then. But if they didn't plan for it, for you to do it the following morning, how come they come and give it to you in that morning when you didn't plan to do it? And you do it as if you had nothing to do for yourself. So really, we have to make sure that we are able to... Um, to not confuse motion for progress. When you keep doing things that you didn't plan to do at the, for the whole day, you will feel very tired, of course. You've worked hard. You've done a lot of things. But if you really compare against what you plan to do, you find that you've done nothing. 
And for me, that is not productivity. Just doing things because you had to, or because they were pushed to you to do them, doesn't mean you are productive. But productivity must come from within you so that you feel like I've achieved something, so that you have a success you can celebrate. There are tools that you can actually use to become productive. Even writing a simple to-do list. Very many people say, okay, to-do list don't work and, and all that. But I think you need to understand what you want to achieve every single day, every single week, every single month, and every single year of your life. You need to understand what you have achieved. And the things that you are going to achieve that come from your own responsibility and those that are given by others. Unless you are able to identify the reason why you have to do one thing before the other like, that, that is coming into your schedule and you can put it ahead of some of the things you're doing, then do not actually, you, you don't want to actually uh, put yourself out and um, just take anything just because you can take it. Because if you can take it, if you can take anything anytime, it means you don't plan yourself and you have to plan and know exactly how you want to approach every single activity in your day for you to be productive. So the fact that you are doing things doesn't mean you're productive. The fact that you're moving doesn't mean that you're progressing. The fact that you're growing doesn't mean you're developing. So we have to differentiate those different uh, aspects of, 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 um, of, of productivity. And we have to know, and there's a time I talked about productivity um, in, one of, in one training writer's guild. And, 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 and it simply is the percentage of time or like how much time we use to attain the same objective in, you know, that, that was, you know, as compared to the standard time that is required to happen, right? So that is also comes in productivity as well. So another thing you want to look at is you want to look beyond the problem to the root cause of the problem. Many, many companies nowadays include problem solving techniques in their interviews. So if you are faced with a problem, and the first thing you look at, the first thing you put all your problem in, I mean, the first thing you consider that you want to solve is the problem. You are not solving problems. You actually, if you're solving problems, then you're doing it the brick and mortar way. You're doing it the local way. You're doing it the ordinary way. But for you to know why you are having a headache, you have to know if you are sick. You might be having malaria. You might be having something else. Something else might be ailing you. So you need to understand what is the root cause of the problem. That is when you can be able to, And of course, you will analyze the problem. You analyze the problem knowing where you want to go. You don't, you don't analyze a problem trying to find out more about the problem. Analyze the problem trying to find out why the problem occurred in the first place. Then you can now innovate. Because that alone is innovation. Because when you start thinking about solving the actual causes of problems, then you are forced to think of ways in which that can be done. And that is innovating. You're coming up with new ways, either new ways or improving ways that are no longer working that is, uh, have been tried. That is innovation. You're actually changing things, changing how things are done. And I think that is one thing that uh, we, have, we all have to um, practice again. And then building a digital brand. Um, you don't light up a candle and put it under the table. The Bible uh, records that. And therefore, if you have something in you that you want people to see, you want people to hear about, then you need to put, put it out there. We have so many people who have who do very, very amazing things. But if you go to the social media platforms, uh, there's nothing really. Like there, there's nothing that talks about what they really do in, you know, in, in their backstage life. But some of them, there are some people just want, want, want to keep their life and their works you know, uh, away from social media. But again, and even, even, even about writing blogs and just writing articles on Medium or having your own blog, you write your stuff. You need to actually build a digital brand that speaks out for you. So that when someone is asking or is looking for someone who is capable of doing something and all of them are now is looking digitally, are, are, are headhunting digitally, then they're able to find you. So you have to build your brand. You have to make sure that you, your digital brand, you have to make sure that you feed and you develop your digital self or your digital personality, you have to build on it. You have to train it. You have to train how to communicate. You have to even curate how you, how you make your posts on social media. You have to know the kind of audience that you want to target. You have to have something to say about something that matters to you and your career or your, 
your 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 course. You have to actually position yourself in order to be able to place it in a way that someone can be able to know at a glance. The first time someone goes to your Facebook profile, they know what you do, they know why you're doing it, and they know how you're doing it. That way, your digital brand will be so strong enough to be identified and noticed by anyone. And they normally say, you don't know who's watching. You have no idea who's watching. Um, another thing is, um, I mean, just taking <laughs> the digital life seriously. And, and I think this is just about um, uh, minding about what is about what is there about you online. And I think this is very, very important for many people who most likely, I mean, you are, you are when you are younger, you know, I, I, I looked at one of the posts I made on Facebook uh, about eight years ago, and I couldn't imagine that was me then. But then you look at yourself back then, you are young and naive, and you are excited about Facebook. You wanted to just, you know, also show that you're also there, you are online. And so you just do a, a say and say a lot of, you know, things you, you don't think you would say. So we just have to take it seriously and make sure that I know that what we post there can live forever and they can be a legacy. You know, there's a time I was very sick, sometimes in 2011, I think. I was very sick. I had cerebral, cerebral malaria and uh, I was almost dying. I mean, I was almost dying. And, um, I would say I almost shook hands with death, you know, and uh, one of the most painful things, I wasn't worried about not ever eating anymore, not ever eating the nice ugali my mom used to cook or never, you know, seeing the skies or never seeing any plants. I wasn't worried about going to hell or going to heaven or anything. As a young person, I just finished high school, um, just one year outside. You cannot imagine that my biggest worry was how someone was going to message me on Facebook and not know I am dead. That's all I was worried about. Like, so David messages me on, on Facebook and he asked himself, why is I not replying today? And I'm dead and he doesn't know. That was my biggest worry. And that in itself actually tells you how intertwined we sometimes can get with these kind of platforms. And we have to be able to just take it seriously and use them to our advantage. Use it to position yourself, use it to tell people who you are, why you're doing it, and your purpose in life. And um, that is just it. And um, now I'm open for any questions if there's any, or we can just call it a day. Any questions that someone has, if anyone is still within, it's going to be fine. I think you can go through a, a comment. There are some questions. Let me see. Let me see. All right. Um, hmm. All right. So Gabriel says, I'm afraid to say this, but I think I am expected to have accounts in, <laughs> in most social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You forgot many of them, but there are so many. There's Pinterest. There's, uh, there, 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 there's uh, uh, I mean, you can name all of them. I mean, yes, you're expected. <laughs> The thought that I am expected to create time for all this is scary. Must I be available in all the platforms? Not really. And most people are not available in all the platforms. And uh, like I said, Gabriel, you might just want to choose your best friend in all of them. If you think Facebook works for you, choose Facebook. Know what you need for, for Facebook. And uh, for brands, unfortunately for brands, yes, you are required to have all of them for brands. But for personal, like, um, for, for, for personal uh, purposes, like if I'm just building my own stuff, my own brand, I might want just to choose one place which I can fully give my energy into. If I think I'm good with Twitter, I may just actually form the best and the biggest brand on Twitter. Someone like Janet Machuka has built a very big brand on Twitter, both for herself and for her company, Africa Twitch Chat, and, 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 uh, yeah, and, and such. And many other people have actually built uh, brands like that, either on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. People have built the biggest brands on Instagram alone, not even thinking of Facebook. So, Gabriel, I think you might just you, you you might just want as a person you might want you might just want to choose one that resonates with your likeness, the one that makes you happy the most, the one that you will wake up in the morning and check every other time, and then you can stick to it, and you can also now limit the times you go to it because now you have control over it. So. You just want to, as a person, you want to, um, you want to just choose your best friend in all those platforms and see which one works for you. But as a brand, as a brand, something something that I can advise is that probably 
something that we also try to do at Brainverse is we are trying to align the social media platforms for, for specific purposes only. For instance, you leave Facebook maybe to just share some stories or your events or something new from your blog. You use Twitter to join conversations that are aligned to your vision and that um, to follow people that, uh, that, that, that tend to do the things you do and also just to see what's going on in your industry. Maybe you use LinkedIn to also connect with people in your industry and just get to know what's going on. And you use Instagram to just display your products and just see or display photos of people using a product or people in your salon or people in, in, in you know, uh, displaying or selling your books or, or, or maybe some of the books you've, you, 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 you've actually done or you've written or you've uh, published or something like that. So for brands have to choose very wisely because you can imagine if you have to post the same information on all the platforms, they will, they will sort of look disjointed. You have the same info on Facebook, the same info on Twitter, the same info on Instagram, and all of them have different ways of positioning content. Maybe the most important content for you was in the image, but Twitter <laughs> doesn't display the image fully, and the image size in Twitter is different from that is different from that in um, on Instagram and on and on, Twitter and, and on Facebook. So you find that you have to position, you have to understand what content do I want to be posting on Facebook, what content do I want to be posting on Instagram. What content do you want to be posting on, on, on Twitter? And how do you want to use all these platforms for the betterment of my brand? So we have to identify that as brands. So unfortunately for brands, it's not possible to choose just one because all your customers are somewhere, at least in one of them. And uh, Vinky says, okay, Vinky was answering Gabriel saying, I don't think you need um, to be in all platforms. Uh, you may take, uh, um, my take is to be present on the one that you are able to present uh, and uh, be productive. And, and I agree with you, Vinky. That's, that, that's very brilliant. Thank you for that. Any questions uh, Any questions regarding what I just uh, talked about or anything outside of that that you think can help this audience today? All right, any question? One uh, last poll. Uh, Brian, for me, it's not a, it's not a question really. I just wanted to commend to commend you for the good work, uh, and also uh, tell you that now I'm more afraid uh, of uh, technology. If I told all you think about was whether somebody would message you on Facebook and then you would be unable to reply. Uh, <laughs> I think that's crazy. But. Uh, really, I've enjoyed myself and I've learned a lot, and uh, especially that last bit where you've talked about branding and appearing on all the uh, all the platforms. I think mm -hmm. and the way you've explained about the um, the size of images and the clarity of images and how they appear on the different uh, the, the, the different. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. I, I get you, uh, look at it. Yeah, so really, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have a question, uh, but uh, how, how, how can, uh, how, how can uh, a, an organization like ourselves, for instance, use Instagram? You know, we have always thought that Instagram is... Uh, you know, for fashion people, you know, maybe musicians. And uh, lately, these people who just dance, I don't know what they dance. <laughs> they just dance. So how, how can we utilize uh, Instagram? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Um, any other question? Any other question before I say my perspective on that? And, and any other question just before I let me see in the chat? Okay. Oh, Gabriel, I, I'm, I'm happy you are relieved um, about it. But so, so Lucas, when you want to know how best you can use a platform, you really have to understand what the platform is doing or how the platform is doing it. You have to understand the objective of um, the objective of Instagram. Huh? So. Um, you might find that uh, 
Right. Now, you have to actually get into yourself, into learning the, the vision of that product and how they want to achieve that vision. For instance, Instagram's, um, Instagram's vision, uh, as said in some, some documentation I'm reading right now, is that their vision statement is to solve three simple problems. Number one, mobile photos always come out looking mediocre. Number two, and uh, they say that their, their filters transform photos into professional looking snapshots. Sharing on multiple platforms is a pain. We help you, we help you take a picture once and share it instantly on multiple services. Now, once you know that the Instagram's vision is all around photos, you are very sure, I and mean, all over, around photos and videos, you are very sure that if you're doing anything other than that, then their vision will not support you in achieving your objective. So it means if you are if you're a company that does a lot of prose and text, Instagram may not be working for those kinds of data or information you want to actually publish on Instagram. So you have to identify the part of your organization that will be able to share more on pictures. For instance, if you're a publishing company, for, for instance, and um, you normally have, let's say, events, or you, you normally publish and release new books, Instagram might be a place to publish very well-designed photos of a book you just released and leave a link on your bio or use a product like Linker, which Writers Guild is using very nicely to be able to publish all, uh, all everything Writers Guild. And, 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 and that is why um, uh, I think we have to be very careful on, on, on how we utilize the small spaces we have in this, some of these platforms like, you know, like Instagram. So you have to identify which part of the organization that you have that manifests the kind of vision that Instagram had. Publishing, enabling you to publish photos, to publish videos. Now we have Insta stories. Now we have live on Instagram. If you have, if you have your events and you think this, events, this event is something that could be actually watched by people uh, on, in the live as it is, you can either go live on Facebook or go live on Instagram. And uh, you know, Instagram people are all about double tapping things. You can, you can post a very beautiful picture, write a very beautiful quote, but no one comments, they, but you have thousands of likes or of double taps. And when someone double taps something, it means it caught their attention. So do you have something or a product or a service or even a, 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 some, some feedback by one of your clients or an event that you guys were in that, you're, that some photos of, of, your, of, 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 your, of your sales team talking to something, some, some, some group of people, I mean, and or maybe um, a launch of one of your one of your books, or maybe um, a celebration of something that actually just shows your activity. Because Instagram is a place where people like to uh, be more also personalized. They want to see what's happening in the life of an organization and in the life of a person. So it might be difficult to get a lot of sales from Instagram, but you it gets you in the minds of people. So that one day when they find something to buy from you, they automatically know, I know these people. And oh, last time I saw them, they were having some partnership or they, had, they launched a new product or they, one of their customers says, I love what they do. And maybe they, 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 they shared a picture of one of them, you know, anything. So Instagram it can be used to keep the person or the customer in your mind. And by sharing photos, by sharing videos, by sharing live, um, uh, live, uh, live broadcasts and just capturing the attention and keeping them there. So that is probably one thing that I think we can be able to use. Uh, you can use you can use Instagram for. And again, Instagram and most of these social media platforms have only one point, like one point of putting a link to your website or a link to something you want people to to check out. And that is uh, uh, I just to do something. Um, and I just want to share my just to show you how Writers Guild. Is making use of, uh, of, of of this a platform called Linker, and uh, I was very amazed at how much Writers Guild could just put in one place with this link. So if you go to the Facebook page of Writers Guild or the Instagram account for Writers Guild, you'll find one link in their bio. But then that link leads here. All these other links, all this information that Writers Guild is has put in one place. So if someone, this is like the Writers Guild website, like a, a compromised or a compressed website of Writers Guild. Someone can go to the main website, 
someone can go to the, um, um, to go to look at uh, the journey of writers guild and and and, and, um, and their milestones someone can go on to online i mean our self publishing guide someone can go to the blog of and read from the writers at writers guild someone can join writers guild someone can join the writers passion class someone can just do anything from just this one point. but he came here someone came here from the instagram profile so instagram doesn't have uh, a lot in fact even on the the post itself you can't put a link and it works the link will be will be there but someone cannot click it and go to the link so the only place where you can put a link is number one either promote a, a, a post on, on on instagram put a link or put it in your bio but there's only one link there's only one part to put your link so you have to play clever with it by using a platform like linker to be able to like distribute put all everything all the links that, the, that you need on on this part another brand using this is um um the institution of engineers of kenya also using this to sort of put everything in one place right everything in one place and again i can keep talking about other brands who are also using uh, this platform to differentiate themselves because the foundation as well getting here seeing everything about uh uh, trying to actually position themselves put it by putting all the links they have here in one point telling people why you are here and all every other way they can access your other other stuff so i think this is also very very important when you are choosing how to position yourself using a platform like instagram you have to understand how it works you need to understand what constraints it has for example instagram normally shares mostly square photos like you will do well with square photos on instagram square you do so well with them and also sometimes landscape but square photos on, on, on Instagram do so well. So you have to know if you're sharing as if, if you're sharing on Instagram, you have to have designs or photos that are cropped to be in square for them to be appealing to the eyes and how they are presented to the user. Facebook has different sizes of photos. If you are posting a link, if you're posting a normal post, those photos have different sizes, right? And I'll just give you an example. And I'll just go right here and I'll just um for instance um i'll just present again um so facebook sizes so as you can see um the different sizes of uh let me just this one this, this is just one of them um a cover for a cover page on facebook should be 820 by 312 pixels a profile photo or a profile photo for your, your own profile or a brand profile or a paid profile should be about 180 pixels wide and, 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 and long. A shared image should be 1,200 by 630 pixels. But now you can share any image, but you see how it appears and how Facebook is optimized to display it is what you should use if you're a brand and if, you, if, if you're actually sharing something like that so that someone is able to see everything clearly, everything within what you want them to see. For example, and another one is here. Profile photo is here, the cover photo. This is a bit, this is an older one uh but it could still actually work and, and it, can, it also shows you what will be shown in the mobile in the mobile in, in, a, in a mobile application if you're doing a cover photo for your facebook profile or even for um for, for twitter or anything all these are things that actually have to be very very um defined let me just go to instagram and see what we have there is it instagram photo should always be about 1080 by 1080 pixels in design and there's also um, Insta stories. The size of Insta stories should always be 1080 by 1920 in size. Again, those are numbers that your designs have to adapt to in order to optimize how you put your content on Instagram. Whichever it is, whichever content it is, it has to align to how they are placed. Similar to IG, IGTV, and other things. So, all these social media platforms have got their own sizes. That's why I was saying, not all stories can be posted on Instagram. Not everything can fit on Twitter. Not everything can fit on Facebook. Twitter has that is I think they've increased the the number of characters that you have to you can type. But that alone makes Twitter a very unique platform. So you can't write a whole story on 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 on, on, on Twitter the same way you can write on Facebook. So again, we have to position our brand, the personal or um, either personal brands or small or, 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 or our business brands in a way that makes it easy for us to be able to align ourselves. And uh, I don't know if I've, uh, I think I've answered your question, uh, Lucas, uh, in detail enough. 
that can allow you to actually now see how you can take advantage of Instagram. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much. It's very clear, and uh, I think I'll choose better next time. Thank you very much, indeed. Very good. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, uh, I'd, I'd like to end it there. It's over one and a half hours now, and I think all of us are tired, and we all want to go and uh, have some rest. So anyway, um, thank you very much, uh, Writers Guild. Thank you very much, Patricia, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for putting um, all these things together and in having you know, these people be able to come here. And even for the guests, I think this is being recorded. It should be available on YouTube or for sharing. So please, I think, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm, I'm always happy to share a lot with um, with, 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 with the writers. And again, I, I just placed this other document just so that we are able to also have the people who didn't get to see this to also see it. Um, I said, if you don't get to see, if you don't get to, if you don't get to, to get anything in the whole of this presentation, then this is what you should get. Personal, you as a person should develop new personal development goals to position for the ever-changing corporate needs in terms of digital. Businesses need to, uh, to position their products and services to meet the new and changing needs of consumers that are now more digital savvy, that are struggling to know more about the digital opportunities and are always online, on blogs, on websites, and are staying at home and trying to find their way into, um, into, in, in, into getting some, some of these things on their own. So I think that is something that's very important that we, we get to know and understand as uh, all of us. So thank you very much for this opportunity and I'll take it back to you. Uh, I'll take it back to you, Patricia. Wonderful, wonderful, Brian. Brian, 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 Brian. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if you if you can still hear us. Oh, Appreciate. sorry, sorry. Here we go. I would like to say thank you, thank you, Brian. Uh, for being willing to explain to us and take us through a tour when it comes to technology and digital start marketing and everything. Uh, we really, really have enjoyed this. I've learned so many things. I've wrote down some. And thank you so much for everybody who took time to come here today. Uh, you can write in comment section what you thought of the um, what you thought of this session. Uh, you can contact if you need any help with website and content. Uh, Brian is the right person to contact. Uh, and it's okay for people to contact you. Yes, uh, and, definitely, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. And Brian will be the right person to contact. Yeah. He's one of the people who host the website of Writers Guild. So when you go there and you see all the beautiful things, all thanks to Brian. So he's the right person to contact when it comes to website and online presence. Also, mm -hmm. I would want to appreciate everybody who has been here, who have been so busy in the comment section. Thank you so much for taking time to come to this session. We hope to learn more and we've learned a lot. I hope you use what Brian has taught us in real life. I hope you use it in your social media. I hope you use it in your online presence. Thank you so much. Um, Gabriel, would you want to say something? And any other person, if you want to say something, please just unmute yourself and say something before we close. We only have 10 minutes. Well, Patricia, I don't have something to say, but just to reiterate what you've said, thank you very much, Bran, for taking us through uh, and being very kind to guide us through this. You know, it's, uh, it's assumed that when we can access Instagram or the social media platforms, you know, there is always this bit of optimal use. Well, do we use it well or we just use what we know, like posting and it ends there. So I, find, I found this session very enlightening to even help me to go back and um, probably read more and do more. I'm surprised you are having even the, the vision of Instagram with you. <laughs> Those things, are, I would not have them. Eh? I would uh, 
mine would just be to post a picture and go away. So <laughs> I am challenged <laughs> to go and read more, see exactly yeah. what Twitter wants to do and how <laughs> possibly, you know, we can fit in that or a, a, a person can fit in that. So um, uh, my greatest takeaway is the encouragement to go and read more and take the platform seriously, as you said, because technology being an enabler. So it should enable, it should not threaten us, it should not overwhelm us, it should not do all those things we were mentioning in the comments box, but it should enable what we are doing to be better. So thank you very much for that. And thank you very much, everyone, for uh, for your time. And uh, I I wish you well. I think Patricia will be able to mention to you that next week on Saturday, we have a training on LinkedIn. So we, Brian has given us a broader view, but we will be going now down onto it. So next week, we have a gentleman called Mr. Kinyanjui Kombani, who will be training us on you know, how to use LinkedIn optimally. So we also hope to, you know, to do more even with Instagram and all these other things so that we don't uh, we don't fail to make good use of what is 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 at is our disposal. So you may be, if you are interested, you can reach out to us. Patricia will be able to put an email you can reach out to. And next week also, see you at Ecclesia. And if you would wish to grow in your writing or you'd wish to take your writing a bit more seriously, then we'll also be able to guide you on the same. So thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Uh, as Gabriel has mentioned, next week we have a training on LinkedIn, and uh, Kinyanjui Kombani is our trainer. Uh, we only need few people. Uh, we have six spots remaining because you need a smaller number to be able to make sure they do it in a practical kind of way. So if you feel like you this is for you, you want to improve on your LinkedIn account, you want to see how far you can go with it, then I've left an email over there. Please contact me and I'll be able to help you. The fee is a thousand Kenyan shillings. Uh, Patricia, maybe the email the, the email is a, has a typo, so it's right at writers guild writers guild of ke. Let us guild the serial key. All right, thank you very much. I'll be leaving now. Well, goodbye, everybody. Looking forward to seeing you next week again. Fanon, how are you? Fanon, where are you? Kuna mtu wanaitua Fanon hapa. Mendaje.